welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this is my week 29 wrap up. So I've already talked about that I am participating in New Release a in August. I'm a co-host for that, so that is my focused readathon. But I've always known in the back of my head that I'm was planning to participate in the Magical Readathon by G. Over at Book Roast and the Draconathon that is run by J. Juniper and Little Corner Library, I think is it what it is? Is her channel name? G. Over at Book Roast announced her readathon and I was like, you know what? I got this. All they're all gonna be new releases and my first prompt is to read a childhood favorite, which is a reread. Not what I was hoping for, but the rest I are new releases, so it's still gonna work. It's still gonna work for me. That will all get shared at a later date. Let's go ahead and jump into the books that I have read this week. Now, my part-time job, we're getting ready to lose one of the closers, and so I've been working more nights than I typically do, so not as much reading time. The first book that I finished this week was Valentina Salazar is Not a Monster Hunter by Zoraida Cordova. I think where I left you guys off last weekend was I was getting ready to start chapter 6 and I was having a little bit of a hard time getting into it. After chapter 6, it's all downhill from there. But downhill in a good way. No, I mean like downhill is the action keeps you focused and engaged. And I really, really loved it. Val finally convinces two of her siblings that to do one last mission and they get in their van that they call the Scourge and they go on an adventure to try to help people not know that monsters are real. I think this book took a little too long to get to the adventure. It, it spent way more time establishing Val and her family and how they're not protecting monsters the way they used to. I think for a middle grade I need to get into it a little bit faster. but. I really enjoyed the dynamics of the siblings, especially as you go on and you find out um, none of them have been actually keeping to their word and not doing monster protecting. They all just expect Val, the youngest, to not do it. So it's kind of interesting how that ends up happening. You can tell that everything in her book is there for a purpose and you get the payoff for it. So there are no wasted words, there are no wasted characters. If Val talks about somebody at the beginning, this person comes back up again. Even though it took longer at the beginning to get into the, the adventure, everything else that's in here is done for a reason. So this is very fun. And if you have a child, well, I mean, Val is 11 and a half, so if you have an 11 and a half year old or someone right around there, I think they will really enjoy this book. I then finished Ghost Station by Dan Wells. This is one of the books that I'm reading for my writing excuses homework episodes, and this is not my typical thing. This is, we'll just go with what it says at the bottom, an espionage thriller, and it's a historical fiction a week or two after the Berlin Wall has gone up, and we are, we're following the main character as well as Reed, who is a cryptologist who figures out code and one of their agents that is in East Germany, their code is changed slightly and it's making them think that there's a problem. This is a good paced book. It has a fun format where instead of chapters you get like the timeline. So it's like the day and the time, kind of like a record of what's going on. So in timeline, this doesn't take very long. It happens all within the same month. This is not the first Dan Wells book I have read. I have read his first one, I Am Not a Serial Killer, but this book right here shows me that he has definitely had growth as an author and he can tackle different genres because this does take you on a wild ride of who can I trust and then how do we work t with each other to not have a war start. And so if historical fiction is your thing, I think you'll like this. I think if you like thrillers, you'll probably like this as well. It was really great and it's more character driven than plot so that makes it nice as well. And then I worked on A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe 
if I hadn't switched gears and focused on uh, Ghost Station because it's due today, I probably would have finished this this week. I'm not that far away. And so I know that I'll be continuing to read this into the next week, just really enjoying the sci-fi fantasy space opera that I am reading and how this ensemble is really working together. I've read a lot of ensemble books this week and I've been enjoying them. Just an ensemble is where you have a group of people all working for the same purpose, the same cause, to achieve the same ends, basically. And then I very briefly read from A Light from Uncommon Stars. Not too much further. This is an easy one for me to pick up in short spurts just because the writing draws me in from like the beginning. So like if I don't read it for a couple days and then I pick it up, I can read a, se a couple scenes and I'm good. So just slow reading it. For my writing wrap up, one of the things I was trying to do this week was a character map of an ensemble and realized there was no way I could draw that. It was just going to be a mess if I wanted the connections between every single character. And so I, I stepped back and then did one for each, like a character map for each character. Instead of writing connections and their challenge and their relationship on the character map, I'm just kept keeping a word document. For this character map, I just happened to choose an ensemble that was very intertwined. But it's been fun. I'm enjoying writing. Also really pondering on the things that I learned at the AuthorTube Writers Conference. I haven't even finished all the presentations that I want to see. Leslie Penelope, who writes under the name El Penelope, she talked about the authorpreneur journey or authorpreneur path. So I've really been thinking about that kind of going, what is my plan? What do I want to do? And you know, putting things in order from there. More thinking on the business this week. And for other media, I got some rare alone time in the house last Sunday and I pulled out some DVDs, pulled out some oldies and goodies. I was in a weird, I wanted comedy, but I wanted sweet at the same time. So I, First pulled out America's Sweethearts with Julia Roberts, and then I watched Galaxy Quest. And it was kind of funny to me that in both movies, there is a character named Gwen, and the actor who plays Dwight in The Office is in both movies as well. Didn't realize it, but just had a nice time sitting back and watching movies. It's been a long time since I've done that on the TV. So just getting to sit back and enjoy life. That's nice. We all need breaks. Do you have to take breaks from technology? Do you need to set aside time to read or do other things in order to help rejuvenate yourself? I'd love to know. And what are some of your other hobbies besides reading? I think we're all here for reading or writing. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.